Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Live Skyrim. I am your host, Chompo. If you remember in the last episode, we went up against a bandit horde, got killed, and um, saw Fane's secret little power. Um, we're attempting to take back that uh, that bandit camp. We still gotta please your old Sid Gear City. So, <clears throat> this episode is, uh, we got a lot going on. And by a lot, I mean there's gonna be a lot of killing, a lot of running around, and a lot of people dying. That's not including Fane, though. Fane, Fane doesn't die. Oh, Mr. Smurf. You know, I really need to turn off those Steam notifications. So, you can notice something very quickly. Uh, you'll notice I have my compass up, and I take it down every once in a while. The thing is, is that I do not know the Skyrim map by heart. So, I need to keep that up so I know where to going. Where, where to going. Where I know I'm going. So, there is that. Um, a lot has happened since the last episode um, I have gotten rid of the knock to arrow or knock to tip mod it just yeah I didn't like how it worked and uh, I did some testing with it and one of the parts to it uh, the black arrow didn't actually do as it was meant to do so yeah I created my own mod for that but you know all in good time. All in good time. Uh, let's see. Is there anything there? I, no. No, there is not. So we're kind of close on to the bandit encampment. Uh, you can see that I am in sneak mode. You know, just trying to make sure that people don't see me immediately. Although, my sneak is pretty crap right now. Um, I don't even have the muffle spell. So I'm not even able to use that. So really right now sneaking isn't doing anything besides raising the sneak itself. And let's take down you. And we got four red dots on us now. Great. So we're going to be getting into a glorious fight. Yeah, see her. Uh, my sneak has increased to 32. It's not like it... Whatever. Oh, also, we level up in this episode. Woo! Our first level up, level 11. Where we get to... We get to see the perk, the extra perk, come into play. So you finally get to see that. Alright, they must have given up chase. Let's keep going up. Now, if you remember from last episode, this is where we... First shot our guy, and then got brutally murdered. So something is interesting about Fane. You notice that he could have tried to shoot the target, but he he didn't because he didn't have... Because he's in sneak right now, he didn't have a, like a 90% chance shot of hitting that. So like here, he had give or take a good 90 or so odd percent chance of, uh, getting, uh, of getting that shot. So... You can see that he's quite, he's quite cal- oh, shoot. You can see that he's quite calculating, but in the heat of the moment, like you saw how the bandit was coming up, bandit finger of the mountain, OBIS by the way, you notice that in the heat of the moment, he's not so much as calculating as so much he is rash. He's quite rash in battle. Uh, in open battle, he, he'll run around a lot and just, you know. Although he is rash, he's he's not an idiot. Uh, so you can see him using his environment to his advantage. As you saw, he just jumped off the ledge, knowing that they were going to go around. They weren't going to jump off. Don't have enough for fury. Let's take out our katana. Interesting. So we just gotta put that away and bring it back out. 
so you'll notice immediately that we've got that big thing. Uh, we're going to come across a lot of different types of those guys throughout Fane's life here in Skyrim. Uh, compliments to OBIS. Taking out the bow again, shooting some people. Ooh, no. You notice that I keep running around in a circle, um, which gives me a chance of being able to hit the people or taking as little damage as possible. Everyone's too powerful for Fury. When I was recording this, I was really scared because I didn't want to. I didn't want to die again. And while you watch this, I'm going to tell you a little something that I'd noticed while doing some research here. Um, this has this doesn't have to per pertain to uh, Fane himself, but we're just doing some pretty heavy combat right now. So I thought you might want to listen to you know something that I have I've picked up through doing research. Um. I have come across two things. All right, very quickly. You're going to see me put frostbite venom onto my sword, hopefully to do something. Apparently, I can't throw a sword either. Yeah, man. Suck at this. <clears throat> so, first, let's talk about the Imperials and the Stormcloaks. And what I'm going to be talking about is the historical correlation. And, um, here's what I mean. If you look at the Imperials, they have a very Roman-esque look to them. They have the... I mean, it's, you would have to be blind to not notice that they have very... Ooh. Stab through the heart. No singing. Um, that they have a very, um... A Roman look to them and uh, historically um, Romans had fought the Germanic tribes uh, which was I believe north of them but I don't know if I'm wrong say so in the comments so that I can learn something I don't have much proof backing this uh, besides just the the look of them the and I mean there's a little more very quickly what I've just done I had put a aversion to fire poison on my sword and then hit the digger then using flames I make it so that he is then much more affected by the fire so that I don't have to get as close to him anyway so really my only backing with this theory is that is just the look that's about it um, I mean, the Stormcloaks in and of themselves are potentially, like, not, they, they are per, they are like the persona of the Germanic tribes, because if you look at them, they have, their armor's quite furish in nature, um, ah, finally, they're all dead, we're gonna take this guy's armor, um, this isn't so much unique armor, but it's... Uh, the name is unique, I think. Take that so that I can disenchant. Lockpicks are always good. So that's about it. They, they, they look like it, and it's quite interesting. I would like to do more research on it, but... The Germanics, uh, the German tribes, uh, got better throughout the years by watching the Imperials battle. And although the Stormcloaks and the Imperials haven't been fighting for a very long time, or as long as the German, uh, as the Romans were fighting, um, I can assume that they have gotten better over time by watching the Imperial Legion fight. But again, that is really just a just a speculation. Now, here's where my second 
theory comes into play, and I have a little more backing with this one. The Thalmor, the, the Aldmeri Dominion, is the historical connotation to Hitler's Third Reich. Reich? Reich. Reich. I think it's Reich. I apologize, I don't speak German. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. So I'm going to say Reich. Here's my, here's my backing for this. Oh. Very quickly, let's uh, shoot this disloyal in the back. Sneak attack. And level up. So here's our next kind of round of bandits. So here is my backing for that the Thalmor are kind of the historical equivalent to Hitler's Third Reich. The Nazis um, wanted to create a supreme race. Um, or Hitler did, really. The Aryan race, the blonde-haired, blue-eyed. They were considered the master race. They were... And everyone else was just infidel. They, they were... They were inferior, not infidel. They were inferior to the Nazis. Same thing goes with the Thalmor. Think about it. The Thalmor, when you fight them, they say, I am your master and you are the dog. And they say multiple things on that that connotate that they believe that their elven mastery is the most important. Or that they, they are the supreme species. And they're not wrong per se they're not the pinnacle of everything but they are some of the best at what they do because they were the first mortal race to encompass Nern um they came from Al I can't even remember someone's gonna have to say that for me. so there's my first thing the second one is that the Thal the Nazis persecuted a specific um, religion. Now, I understand that the Nazis also persecuted uh, gays and gypsies and all of that, but um, when you think of Nazis, you immediately think of them persecuting the Jews. So... Maybe you're wondering, well, Chompo, how does that connotate to the Thalmor? The Thalmor don't enslave Jews and put them into in camps and then burn them. You're right, they don't. Um, but they do persecute the... and have outlawed Talos. Which in the same right is very much... Um, they, they, see, I don't know, I don't know why the fire stays there. It's helpful. Also, apparently they're really stupid, or they're afraid, yeah, they, they must be afraid of Fane. Of just going up onto that ledge and fighting him. Yeah, whatever. Oh, no, one of them got brave. So, there, there's that. So, they, they persecute a specific religion. They believe that they are the master race. And here is where the last point. And this is, I'm not going to say it's the strongest point, but it's quite an interesting little bit. Hitler, Hitler's Nazis were the Third Reich. There was a first and a second before them. If I am saying it correctly, I think the Second Reich was Weimar Germany, but I, I don't know. I Okay, interesting. But I don't know. I can't I can't remember for the life of me if that was true. Oh, nope, she's she's too scared to come up here on this mountain. The Thalmor, or the Elmeri Dominion. The Thalmor are the third dominion. There was a first and a second before them. While doing my research I, I had noticed that and I found it interesting. And when I did the correlation, I'm like, oh, this is intriguing. This is a good topic point to put in the video. If you think otherwise, or you think I'm completely... Uh, it's just complete and utter baloney. So be it. But put what you think in the comments below. We can have a nice little chat about it. Which would be nice. So you saw that there's a Norse axe. That's not really uh, a vanilla weapon. It's not. 
I have found, well, not found, it's actually kind of quite known. Jace's Swords mod? Oh my god. This man, or group of people, or woman if it's a woman. Oh my gosh. Glorious. Glorious, glorious, glorious weapons. They, they were just, oh man. So you've got no, oh, I can't even explain how beautiful some of these weapons are. Uh, I just can't. They're, they are beautiful. I tried to pick it up and then didn't. And then I just kept moving. So as you can see, Fane has dispatched his enemies. Uh, not so much with ease, but he used uh, the land tactical advantage and the fact that everybody else was too scared to go at him. And we got some Khajiit. Or is that an Argonian? Argonian, I think. Argonian. Man, there's no snow. So, in the last journal entry in the last video... Oh, they jumped down. Okay. So something interesting is that he doesn't know about he he do, he has no idea about his curse at all. He has absolutely no understanding of why he was on why he was able to um die, feel the death, feel the lightning strike him, and then just wake up in front of the Jarl's longhouse. He doesn't know, so that's a that is an interesting plot point that will be expanded further into the story. Although, ah, the treasure chest. So, I'll explain what that is in a second. So, Fane doesn't know anything about his, about that. Um, what we can tell is that he does not like his father from his past. Remember that his father... Uh, abandoned the family when he was about 15 and uh, he wrote a letter saying that he had um, traveled on to Skyrim uh, to become a bandit. Reasons are unclear. Um, it didn't really say much, but yeah. So what I did right there is I tried to use a little bit of misdirection. By shooting an arrow into a wall, uh, I was hoping. Alright, I heard something. I heard someone using an alchemy table. Alright, whatever. Um, is, if there was someone there and they heard it, they would have immediately, like, popped up. And I would have known that there were an enemy there. There was an enemy. Just picking up some things. You'll notice that I'm picking up the sti- I heard it again. There's definitely someone there. Yep, there's- Yeah. There you are. Pew. Pew. Is someone there? Pew. Found you. You'll notice that I'm picking up all these different weapons that really I don't need. They're, they're not helpful. I'm never going to use them. Especially since they're basically two-handed. Um, the reason I'm doing this is that I can smelt them down. I can smelt them down for um, their ingots, which can then be used for other things. But then it also actually gives me smithing, like smithing training. Just keep shooting, just keep shooting. Man, we are burning through potions in this episode. So, something I want to talk about, about uh, Fane as a character, is that he, at one point, was a mercenary. He would kill people for money. Um, and, which means that he's going to want to try to find the Dark Brotherhood. A... He knows they exist. Simple. Simple as that. He knows that they are 
prominent here in Skyrim, but he doesn't he A, he doesn't know where to find them. And B well there is really is no B. There, the other reason he wants them is that they will teach him the art of stealth and murder. Remember that he's not so much a very stealthy person right now. I mean, he's getting spotted by the lowliest of bandits. You're, you're not that sneaky. So he wants to find these people to join their ranks, but then also use their intel, potentially, if they have any good intel, to find his father. And let's level up. Put this into stamina. So remember, I get two perk points per level. Although you see perks to increase one. I believe I'm going to put this in, yep, in destruction. In the novice destruction. Just so that my flames and stuff do uh, take less magicka. And you'll see, added one perk point. I um, will be putting this into enchanting, I believe, at one point. So I don't have any iron ingots to be able to make any more arrows, because I need them. I'm only down to 60. We'll just upgrade all of this because uh, smithing levels. So, as I said, Fane does not. Fane, Fane has killed for money before. But he also has a sense of a moral code to him. Um, this moral code has not yet been shown at all, really. Uh, there's been no points in which he will sh he's shown them, but I can tell you right off the bat that one of his main uh, codes is that he will not murder an innocent person. He will not kill like, let if we let's say go to Falkreath. He's not going to go up to a random civilian and murder them. He, he's just not going to do that. That's not something he does. Because remember, his... His um, trainer, his mercenary... The mercenary leader taught him the honor of killing. Um, what that means to if he finds some random person on the road... That's a little different. But he will not kill someone... If they are innocent. Or if they are, if they are in the city and they are a normal person, he's not going to kill them. Now, if they've got a bounty on their head, uh, that's where we go into the Shades of Grey. So you'll notice that the eyes slowly closing. Yeah, dang. That in I don't have a mod that increases my, like, leveling quicker. I, I do not, so... That was that was interesting, especially when I first saw that. I was like, "Dang!" We're gonna use these orcish arrows. Try to do a little more damage. Hit her in the back. Always want to hit the back. Ah, okay, so there's the key. There? Alright, so we got three more people before we get to enter the lair of the bandit. Or the bandit chief, really. So this area gets interesting, and I don't know why. Um, they were too afraid to come up onto the rocks, so I was able to just take pot shots at these people. Uh, I'm assuming that they were just too afraid to come up onto the rocks, or that they all had some irrational fear of going up on rocks with someone shooting at them. I don't know. I would have that fear too, 
Uh, if I was getting shot at, I probably wouldn't want to go up onto the rocks, but... Made, uh, my shooting a lot easier, even though I... My aim was a little off. Right. You keep saying that. You should join the storm folks. That's also something for future talk uh, later on once Fane becomes more fleshed out as a character. Is, um, what side, if any, would he take on the Civil War? Would he join the Imperials or would he join the storm folks? But obviously, uh, you guys don't know enough about Fane as a person to be able to have any uh, conversation on that. So we'll hold that one off for a while. Shut up. Oh, so that chest that we got in the beginning, that is from OBIS Loot. It is a add-on to OBIS. Um, I cannot open that right now. Uh, I need two things. I need the power to open it, which I believe I have the book in my inventory, but I do not know. And I also need a key. And keys are dropped from normal bandits. So you saw that that key, that that chest was average. That was, uh, there's three tiers. There's light, average, which I had never seen before until right then, and heavy. Take that. That small sword, that is from Jace's sword mod. Take that. Um, and let's put on that green face mask. Um, we can already start to see Fane's... By putting on the mask, um, it starts to kind of show Fane turning into that want-to-be assassin by starting to cover up his facial features, by hiding his beard and his mouth. So all that is seen is those really intense blue eyes. You know, if you can... There it is. Yep. Carrots. Salt. It's always good. Always good. Want to do some checking? Grab the iron dagger. Can be smelted down. Uh, except we're not actually going to smelt it. We are going to um, use it for a little different thing. We need to find a court wizard, though. So we may either. I believe that once we finish here in Falkreath, we will start making our way over to Riften. Um. So you'll notice a few things here really quickly. I'll go back to the chests in a second. There's oil on the ground. So I was looking for a oil pot to shoot, which I couldn't find, so I need to use the next best thing. My flames. Um, so the chests. The light chests give all right stuff. They're, they're really not that good. Uh, average chests, I don't know. And heavy chests give some freaking badass loot. Like, I've gotten some really cool things. How usable are they? Eh, I don't know. Um, but they're really cool. Um, so yeah, I can't wait to find a key and use that and see what average chests give. Eh. Soldier's death. So, yeah, the chests are really fun to come across because they're rare, and when you open them, you may not get anything good, but it's always nice to be like, oh, yay, I got a chest. Yay, chest. Ooh. All right, let's just clear up that body. 
jump down and uh, let's get ready to head back to Falkreath so that we may see Jarl Sidgir. Sidgir, Sidgir. Oh, who's that in the distance? Take this and hold missed. on to it. I'll be back for it later. I'll pay you good. Who down, no time buddy. to talk. Snitch or double cross me and I'll kill you. Oh, I mean it. <laughs> come here. Did you see someone run past just now? Yeah, he went that way. Great. Thanks. Bastard stole from me. I'll catch him though. Where are you? Fane's Journal. Entry 2. It's been years now since I last saw my mother. I can't remember what she looks like, or even what her face, face structure was. I remember my father, though, very clearly. Tall and lean. Dark hair, like mine. But he did not have my blue eyes. He had golden ones. My mother used to tease that it was those eyes that made her marry him. I would have to agree with her, for why would anyone want to marry a traveling merchant who's only home every other month for a few days? I remember snippets of the letter of him saying that he's leaving, joining bandits in Skyrim, and some apologies to my mother and I. For all I know, he could be the leader of all bandits. He's always had a silver tongue. My mother, for whatever reason, always kept that letter close to her in hopes that it was a cruel joke or something. When she died, I took the letter, but I burned it. I promised to find the man that I once called father, and I will watch as my blade slides into him and his life passes from his eyes. All right, that was an interesting journal entry by Fane. Uh, you can e you can easily see the hatred that he has for his father. Uh, we will go into this journal entry more into the next episode, but I'd like to talk a little bit about what just happened with that fugitive. You notice that... Wow. Okay, so those fumes from the fire must have really been messing with Fane. He thinks there's an enemy there or something. I, I don't even know. Um, so there is something that was interesting with the fugitive. Uh, besides the fact that he did try to kill him, um, he more than likely would attempt to kill the fugitive for the fact that he is on the run, he is illegal, and he may, got, may have gotten a reward. Um, although missing twice. When the person came up to him, uh, the hunter, asking if he had seen his stuff, Fing told him where he went, but he didn't actually give the mace back, which um, we'll play later on into Fane's psychology once I have my psych profile all finished out for Fane. So that's something interesting to keep in mind, that he'll do the right thing, although he may uh, try to get something out of it. We're coming back onto the brink of... Uh, uh, you know what, I'll talk about the letter, uh, about his journal entry, a little bit. Um, besides that, he couldn't really figure out what his mother looked like. Uh, it this was mainly meant so much the fact, for the fact that he hated his father. He hates his father. I mean, he's even stated that he wants to watch his blade slide into him. He wants to murder his father. Is he all sitting here in, or is he asleep? Uh, uh, sleep. Alright, let's try to find the inn. Buy some food, get some rest, talk to the Jarl. Yeah, Jarl. Should be good. Oh, but first, let's battle the vampire. <laughs> and then down goes a guard. We're going to get back. Uh, we don't have much health to be able to be sucked away. So we're actually just going to wait for the guards to kind of 
go in while we try to take them out from afar. So flush. Go on for the kill. And we'll take the vampire dust. It's always good to take. You can make invisibility potions out of it. Oh. Come here, Duffy. God might get nervous. <sighs> Apologize for that if you had if you heard that. Come on in. Just stoke the fire. Short spoons. And get the cold out. Man in what? What? All right then. Yep. Welcome to Dead Man's Drink. Let's sate that appetite. All right, fam. Let's buy some food. It's always good to buy food. Right, we'll go with some goat. Maybe some uh, venison chop. Nothing to drink, everything. All the drinks are expensive. Big talk of a little boy in Windhelm. Name of Aventus Aretino. Get this. He's been trying to contact the Dark Brotherhood. <laughs> Foolish lad. Alright, so this is interesting. We now have our have first of um, look. They say the dark we have our first insight into the Dark Brotherhood. Margin. So maybe Sight we'll go to Windhelm see. instead of Riften. Sure thing. It's yours nice. for a day. I'll show you to your room. Nope. Right this nope. Way. And uh, third time's a charm. All right. Let's get some rest. Uh, we have to talk with the Jarl tomorrow. Or today? Eh, whatever. Let me know if there's anything else. Could not be in my room. That'd be nice. Strangers like you bring war. I've seen enough war. Short bones. Serious, handsome another, man. another. I, I don't know how handsome I am. I'm sorry. I should really go now. Uh. I can't really help you. I'm just Dengir's man. Who is Dengir? Whatever. We're here to talk to the Jarl of Falkreath. The young Jarl. Young Jarl Sidgir. Young Jarl Sidgir. Oh, wow. Hmm, just walked on fire. You look a bit peaked. Are you sure you shouldn't be home? Teach them to stop paying me. Here, you deserve a reward for Hell your service. Hell yeah. You know what? I like you. You're not afraid to get your hands okay. dirty. I hereby grant you permission to purchase property in Falkreath. Mm -hmm. Great. Talk to my steward. Now I can interested. kind of have Falkreath maybe be a home base for a little while? I don't know. Come we'll and see out. me again sometime. Anyways, I might have some use for you. Thank you, everybody, for watching this glorious episode of Let's Live Skyrim.